Hello and welcome to OptimisticWellness.com, the real story interview series. And today I have here Steve Cam, Nerd Fitness himself. And Steve Cam is someone that I would definitely call pragmatic. He's all about providing practical solutions. And his website, Nerd Fitness, has a ton of those practical tips about how to start your fitness journey, uh, specific exercises, healthy lifestyle plans, and in general, how to level up your life, as the tagline of the website goes. And Steve, it's not just an excellent website, but Steve emphasizes the nerd in nerd fitness in his articles. You can see it when he relates Optimus Prime, the Transformer, to living a good life and being fit. And he blogs for nerds that want to get in shape, and nerd is a compliment here. So I've got a couple of quotes here from Steve that I feel really embody what he's all about. So regarding nerd fitness, you said, when I started the company, I told myself that failure wasn't an option. So I just worked all day, every day for two years until it became something that could support me. That's awesome persistence. And final okay. quote here before we start the interview about the message of your site. I may be doing what I can to help you lose weight and feel better about yourself. But really, I'm just removing any barriers that prevent you from living a life that you can look back on with pride. I hope to look back on my life at the age of 88 and say, I did it right. If I don't make it that long, that's okay. As long as each day is lived with conviction and purpose, I can leave this world happy. And with that, Steve Cam, welcome. Hey Josh, what's up man? It's all good. All right, so we'll get started here. So you were 16, and you were cut from the high school basketball team. You said you were somewhere around 5'10", 110 pounds. And you, so you signed up to a gym to get ripped, you know? And on the first day, you loaded up the bench press really enthusiastically. And with the heavy weights, you dropped it on your chest. Thankfully, you were okay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the the weights rolled off into the floor. People were staring. You said it was one of the most humiliating gym experiences you've had, uh, but this didn't stop you. You fell you fell in love with exercise and fitness, but you had an economics degree, and you were set to climb the corporate ladder. So there was a disconnect in the path the path that you were on and the path that you actually wanted to take. So could you talk more about these experiences and how it led you to kind of being on the path now with the heart and sure. soul? Okay. Um, yeah, very simply, I, you know, I, I wanted to, I wanted to get in shape because, you know, like I said, that was one of those really big life moments for me. Uh, you know, I, I got cut from the basketball team, but I didn't, you know, I had no business being on a basketball court. I couldn't dribble with my left hand. I couldn't shoot very well. You know, the only thing I was good at, I guess, was, was defense. And that was about it. So I, you know, I got cut from the basketball team and, and I, I noticed that like, at, at 5'10", I can't even remember. Uh, I needed to make some changes, so I went to a gym. Almost killed myself by dropping weights. And, uh, but I, I got it. I got hooked. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. You know, I couldn't lift that up yesterday, but today I can. And tomorrow I might be able to lift up something a little bit heavier. And I enjoyed the concept of getting a little bit stronger, getting a little bit faster, getting a little bit bigger. Um, and a little bit more healthy every time that I would work out and I began to really really enjoy that so through the rest of high school and through all of college I really fell in love with strength training uh, and it wasn't until after college that I finally put two and two together that proper eating was like 80 percent of the battle so when I combined proper eating with my strength training like my body completely changed within 30 days and I knew immediately like okay this is something I really enjoy and I have a lot of fun with I think I have an opportunity to to help other people not make the same mistakes that I did. You know, it took me up and making mistakes before I finally figured out that there is a right way and a wrong way. And I had done all to find the right way. And you know, I, I went to college for I got my degree in economics and business and thought I was gonna climb the corporate ladder, but I very quickly realized once I got out of school that sitting behind a desk for the next forty five years of my life wasn't the life I, I was meant to live. So I started you know, coming up with this idea of, well, I think I could help beginners get in shape. 
and I'm trying to think of you know who those beginners are and people that might be scared to go to a gym or don't ha you know lack self confidence and and all of these things. And I was like, perfect. You know, I'm a nerd. I love fitness. Like, let's see if I can come up with my own little unique uh, niche in the fitness industry. Like, I don't think I'm going to become the next you know Jillian Michaels or Richard Simmons or anything. Like, I have no desire to do that. I'm like, that's fine. Those people can have their supplements and um, their infomercials and stuff. And instead, I'll just I'll put my focus on what I know best, and that and helping folks get in shape. So I really just started writing articles. Uh, it's been almost I think about three and a half years now uh, of writing, and uh, one article at a time, one day at a time. I think I just published my four hundredth article, and somehow here I am sitting in a, an apartment overlooking the ocean down in Ecuador. <laughs> it, yeah, it's amazing and. And you spend like what, like I read like two, at least two hours per article. Or... Oh, at least some of them. I, I mean, anywhere from eight to I would say eight is probably uh, six to eight is more the average. Um, oh. And then you know I've had articles that have taken me days to write that you know multiple edits and they, I go back and forth with them for weeks and weeks at a time before I finally hit publish. So yeah, I put a lot of work into those suckers. Wow. Yeah, and it shows. So. You also wrote that growing up as a kid, you freaking loved Transformers, and this being the Real Story interview series, it's a big part of your life, I can't leave it out. Uh, you're into Transformers, video games, Superman, all that. Uh, how has that had an impact, not just on nerd fitness and the, the theme of the website, but on your life? Uh, simple. I think, you know, growing up, and, and for any kid, even adults these days, you know, we love... You know, there's a reason Avengers and, and Dark Knight Rises is going to be the biggest movies of the summer. We love that escape. We love being able to, you know, kind of step outside our ordinary lives and, and pr imagine what it would be like to live like a superhero. And, you know, growing up, same thing. I dressed up like Superman, I think, for five Halloweens in a row. I've loved Superman. Like, that's who I wanted to be as a small, skinny, weak kid. Like, Superman was the guy that I wanted to become. So when I started writing about nerd fitness... You know, I thought, like, well, we're, we're all a bunch of nerds sitting around in our basement playing games and trying to become a different character or a more leveled up character in a video game. Uh, you know, really um, admirable qualities that we see in these characters and try to apply them to our own lives. Like, where are those, what are some of the things that those characters do that we want to become and you know, what do they embody and what do they stand for? Why don't we stand for the same things? Just because I can't fly doesn't mean I still can't become a superhero, you know? So that's the kind of way I looked at my life now. And every day is an, an adventure. Uh, every day or every new workout is an opportunity for me to get stronger. And every time I visit a new place or talk to a new person, it's an opportunity to, to do something completely different that I will look back on fondly. That's really excellent. And when you were in Atlanta, you you also regularly volunteered at the uh, Atlanta Children's Hospital. Could you talk more about this experience and how that's impacted your life? Absolutely. Uh, I just you know I love kids, and I I knew when I lived in Atlanta, working a full time job and running Nerd Fitness, but I wanted to also give back. And something unfortunately I haven't been able to do as much of lately now that I've been traveling. Something I want to get back into more. But anyways, I lived in Atlanta. I wanted to. I wanted to do something with, with kids, and you know, I think the, the best thing for me was to help kids that you know, were it kind of been dealt a, dealt a tough hand. So I went and volunteer, or signed up to be a volunteer at the Children's Hospital and ended up becoming like the regular bingo caller at Children's Bingo every Thursday. And I tell you, I, I don't think anything was more eye-opening to me than, than probably that experience, you know, to, to come back from saying, oh, I had a crappy day, and oh, life is tough, and, and then going to this children's hospital and seeing these kids that have been in there for months and months and months get so excited to win at bingo, and they get, they get like a pack of playing cards or, you know, a new, uh, some new toy to play with back in their, their room, you know, months and weeks and whatever beyond that. It's just really humbling to see like you know what I think I have it bad and I don't I see these kids that have everything you know everything stacked against them and I couldn't be happier you know mm -hmm. I think it's it just one of those real slap in the face wake you up moments that you know really kept me grounded I think on a weekly basis let me know like 
you know, I'm very fortunate and very lucky, and the fact that I can do what I can to help these kids out, just help them have a good Thursday, made me feel better, and I think is, you know, something I want to do more of in the future. Through Nerd Fitness, I love helping people help themselves, but I also want to do what I can to help folks that maybe can't help themselves. Um, you know, we help everybody try to live a little bit better today than they did the day before. That's excellent, yeah. And speaking from um, experience at the, I was at the Children's Hospital and I loved the bingo there when I was in inpatient, so great that you mentioned that. It was, it really helps take your mind off of uh, the tough stuff. So, oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. It's so much fun coming up with stupid, stupid terms for each of the different numbers, you know, I-20 and uh, before and after, you know, things like that. I, I had way too much fun being a dork calling up bingo numbers for sure. That's right. It's the greatest thing. So, the the concept of your website is summed up in one sentence, and it is level up your life every day. Could you talk about the epic quest of awesome and some of your personal experiences leveling up your own life in addition to this, uh, you know, volunteering at the hospital and all this other stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, up until I was 25, I had never been outside of North America. And at that point, I had just quit my day job. I'm on Nerd Fitness, and I had this idea. I was like, "Look, now that I've kind of freed up my freed up my time and space, whatever I want, I I wanted to start, you know, kind of gaining experience uh, outside of just sitting behind a computer screen. I, I knew there was a whole world out there for me to explore. Uh, growing up, I played my my probably still is my favorite video game series of all time with The Legend of Zelda. And I just love the concept of being a little kid in a giant world and getting a chance to go explore mountains and rivers and islands and deserts and caves and stuff. And I just figured, like, what the hell, man? Why not start doing these things myself? So I just created an entire list of all the things I wanted to do before I died. And uh, But, you know, everybody has a bucket list. I figured, why not have... Uh, epic quest of awesome that sounded nerdier to me and you know once I had that list I just started kind of hammering thing at a time say if, if I can do this I can do the next one if I can do the next one then I can kind of build on that so really it was it was kind of one awesome video game experience after another you know I, I've climbed a mountain in Alaska I uh, scuba dived it with sharks on the Great Barrier Reef I went on a safari down in South Africa I lived a life, uh, I lived a weekend like James Bond in Monte Carlo, um, you know, and I, I'm not, I'm not rich, you know, I think Nerd Fitness is doing very well, especially now, but when I started my, when I started my journey, I didn't have very much money, um, but I just made every decision that I was going to stop spending my money on things and start spending it on experiences, so every decision I made from that point on was to help me live better and longer and have more experiences and more fun and give me a bunch of things that like you said in the intro that I can look back on when I'm 88 and say yeah I did it right and you know so every day I try to do something to that life. Excellent. You are doing it right Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and can we let's talk about uh, limitations limitations that you impose on yourself. You actually said that the only limitations out there are the ones that you impose on yourself. On that note, you've got um, you've got pretty outrageous goals that are really cool, like to buy an island. <laughs> Could you talk more about that and how setting these really outrageous goals and kind of looking at your life from the perspective of like the Legend of Zelda, kind of like you're this person and you're trying to level up and all that. And just how this perspective had of going for these outrageous goals, like getting an island, has impacted your view of the world. Yeah, I, th you know, I think everybody is full of excuses. Um, myself, think we all are, and you know, I think the best quote is your excuses, except for you. And for me, it's just that. Uh, if, if I wasn't going to do something, if I told myself it wasn't possible, then it wasn't going to be. If I told myself that it was possible, yeah, it might take years and it might take a whole bunch of money. Like, I know buying an island is going to cost me millions of dollars. I don't have millions of dollars right now. But I like to think that at some point down the road, if I continue on the path that I'm on, I can eventually get there. And it's not even so that I can, 
you know, like I, don't, I just kind of want an island. Like I thought it would be cool to have an island, so I was like, why not add that to the list? Yeah. Um, you know, I think everybody. When I tell people what I do and how I do it and how I travel, the first thing they say is, wow, I wish I could do that. And I know immediately that they're not going to do it. And it's not because they're not capable or it's not because they don't have the resources. It's because they don't believe they can. You know, if somebody comes to me and they say, hey, I love what you're doing. I'm, how did you do it and how can I get started? All right, we got something to build on here because they're already at least open to the idea that I didn't, you know, I wanted to live like James Bond one day. What the hell does that, what does that even mean? It's like, I got to figure it out. I need to somehow get my way into the Monte Carlo Casino in a tuxedo and spend a night in Monaco. That sounds ridiculous, but I figured, what if it's actually possible? So I, I flew into Nice, the city next to, the, the, the city in France right next to Monaco, found somebody that spoke French. We found a costume shop in these that rented me a tuxedo for like 35 or 40 euros or something so something very cheap but it was a great tux i took a two dollar train ride over to monaco and it was i think it was 15 euros to get in and i used hotel points that i got without you know nothing special to stay in a hotel in monaco all of a sudden i was living like james bond you know it, it didn't the whole entire adventure actually 50 euros because i won a couple bucks playing blackjack like you know, people think all these things are so impossible. And when they say, oh, it's impossible or it's difficult, it's easier for them to say, oh, I can't do it, rather than actually take the time to sit down and figure out what it takes. Because once you do that, holy crap, then you actually have to start doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for my list, it was like, all right, well, I want to, you know, I want to build a, a, I want to build a great company and help this many people. And eventually I want to buy an island. Oh, crap. You know, now I actually have to start doing it. So I've even gone to, you go to like islandsforsale.com and it's like, okay, you know, you can actually buy an island for a couple hundred thousand dollars in certain parts of the United States and certainly elsewhere in the world. Um, I'm not there yet because I'd like to have a nice tropical island. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the fact that I, I'm, I've even like, I, I've considered the possibility that, hey, hey, this is something I can do. And again, like when I started Nerd Fitness, I quit my day job. I 2000 bucks in the bank and no money coming in yet like I didn't I didn't have anything saved up I didn't have any have I didn't have any venture capitalists you know it was I just me and a blog and I said these are the things I'm gonna do what steps do I need to take to get there and then just start hammering them out one day at a time one step at a time start doing these things that are gonna get me a little bit closer to that goal and said somehow here I am a couple years later I've crossed off like 40 things from my list and sitting on a sitting overlooking the ocean in the you know down in ecuador and i'm getting ready to fly to back to the state to visit my brother and then who knows where after that but every decision lately has been made like what's the next thing and how can i get a little bit closer and how can i have more fun because that's how i know how to live my life because i grew up as a video gamer that's how games are set up so that's kind of how i've set up my life too wow that is really cool steve I haven't heard that before, by the way, setting up your life, just modeling it after a video game. And, like, people might go, well, does that, is that practical? Well, look at Steve Cam. I mean, he's living it. So, <laughs> so just, you know, look him up. So this being the Real Story interview series where my goal is really to spotlight the humanity of my guests, is there anything that we haven't talked about here or that's been on your mind lately that not only would help out people, but that really defines who you are, who Steve Cam is as a human being. Yeah, honestly, I think, you know, I've, I, I get a lot of emails, like, especially these days, from people like, hey, I'm interested in starting my own internet business, or I, I want to start doing this, and what's your business plan, and what, is your SE, what are your best SEO marketing tactics and your tips, and, you know, what are your keywords do you do well in? And I look at them with like a complete blank state. Like honestly, I don't. I couldn't tell you what my page ranking is in Google. I couldn't tell you what. I don't. I, I haven't bought a single thing on internet marketing. I haven't spent a dollar on ads. Um, I've dumped all of my focus and effort into helping people, and finding out what they're struggling with and th coming up with unique ways to get through to them to help them live better. And by putting my focus there, 
you know, I think Google Google just recently changed their their algorithms for for blogging, and as a result, one of my posts is now like the second. You know, if you search um, if you search paleo diet, I think my beginner's guide to the paleo diet is like number three after the Wikipedia article on paleo diet and paleodiet.com. Not through anything that I've done. You know, I didn't I didn't try to game the system or do anything. I just I, I tried to write great content that helps people live better. As a result, it resonates with more people, and I, you know it'll weather any storm because it's not built on internet marketing tactics. It's built on helping word of mouth, and it's built on building a community of folks that really want to help each other. And you know, I feel honestly, I feel so fortunate every day to be able to be part of something as cool as as Nerd Fitness. You know, I don't see myself as like the this all powerful dude like spouting out you know, knowledge from up on top of a mountain. Like, I'm the guy down in the trenches with you. Like, yeah, I might be in Ecuador, but I still sit at a desk and write articles and I want to play video games. You know, like, I, I like yeah. being one of the guys and I like doing things that make me happy, which are still, you know, I, I still love to play video games. I still spend all day on the computer. But I also love helping people and I like keeping myself in shape and helping other people stay in shape. And because I put my focus there, I think yeah, it might have taken me a little bit longer for Nerd Fitness to pick up steam, but now that the, now that it's, I mean, it's you know, it's it's becoming something really, you know, really life changing. I think for not only myself but for continues to grow, world changing. Awesome. And where can we contact you, Steve? Yeah, uh, hit me up. It's nerdfitness.com. Super simple. Or you can find me on Twitter at at Steve Cam. Um, if oh. actually if you go to nerdfitness.com in the right hand column uh, there's there's little you know social share buttons if you click on any of those you can pretty much get through to me I still read every email that comes through to nerd fitness um, so if you click on contact and shoot an email I'll get back to you it might take me a couple of weeks because I'm, I'm traveling and you know I get backed up quite a bit on those but I still read everyone that comes in and best I can I try to get back to everybody as well awesome well Steve thank you so much for stopping by and joining the real story interview series Thanks for having me, Josh. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, everyone. Steve Cam, nerdfitness.com, optimisticwellness.com. Optimism is the only way.